Let us pray. Heavenly Father, sanctify us by thy truth, and grant that the Spirit of truth may guide us into all truth, through him who is the truth incarnate, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. Mark 3 verse 22. C.S. Lewis once wrote that there are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. There are no prizes for guessing which ditch our culture by and large has fallen into. In Ireland today, very few people seem to believe in the devil or hell at all, even though they might like to hold on to a belief in angels and heaven. But it can't be done. You can't have one without the other, at least if you are basing your ideas on Christianity. Contrary to this, there are people like Father Pat Collins, who pops up in the media now and then and is known as an exorcist, though I don't think he would choose that as his label. Father Collins has said that in recent years, he has seen an increase in demonic activity and that his services are being called upon more and more. No wonder, because nature abhors a vacuum. And so as Ireland turns away from Christianity, that's bound to have an effect. Something will take its place. Jesus spoke of this principle in Luke chapter 11. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest, and finding none, he saith, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. Our country has been swept and garnished for many generations. We've been privileged, but that privilege is only based on us remaining faithful to the blessings we have received. Today's Gospel reading from Mark chapter 3 gives us much insight into the activity of the devil. Our Lord has performed miracles and it's interesting that none of his opponents ever claimed that he wasn't genuinely, genuinely doing so. Rather, they claim that he's performing miracles by the power of the devil, as my text says. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, he hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. In his response to this claim, Jesus gives them a lesson in logic as well as a warning. How can Satan cast out Satan? If Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost is unforgivable, because those who get themselves into that attitude will not repent which is the essential condition of receiving our Lord's forgiveness. This attitude is the same one God warned his people of through the prophet Isaiah in chapter 5. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Those opposed to Jesus could see with their own eyes the work of the Holy Spirit in his ministry and miracles. 
yet they said that it was the work of the devil instead. They fell for a lie. Lies are the way in which the devil chiefly works in the world, so much so that our Lord called him the father of lies. A good lie is a believable lie, and a believable lie has some truth in it. We can see this in the devil's strategy in Genesis 3, when he told Eve a half-truth. He told her, you sh- ye shall not surely die. Of course, they did die spiritually. They didn't die immediately on disobedience physically. But it was a half-truth to say, ye shall not surely die. This is how heresy has always begun in church history. Someone takes an aspect of Christian truth, perhaps something they're very interested in or has been significant in their own life, and they twist it out of proportion. Like a jigsaw, the faith fits together perfectly, even if we don't always see how. However, a heresy is when one piece is changed and it changes and ruins the whole thing. The devil has always been alive and active in our world and he's still alive and active in Ireland today. The difference is that now his lies are increasingly being embraced. People are increasingly call, e- calling evil good and good evil, putting darkness for light and light for darkness, and putting bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. There are so many examples we could choose from recent Irish history, including the high-profile referendums of the past few years. But there's one thing I find very troubling. A former president of ours now spends much of her retirement criticising the church which she claims to love. And one of her recent targets of attack was the baptism of infants, which she claims breaches fundamental human rights. Now, straight away, that accuses all of us who have had our children baptised as having acted against our children's best interests. But more than that, this is a clear example of someone calling something evil, which Christians from the earliest years of the church have called good. There's no middle ground. Either we believe this is good or it is evil. And when it comes to a choice between good and evil or true or, and false, we are facing the choice between which spirit we're going to listen to, the Holy Spirit or the devil. We're either on the side of God or we're not. He is the supreme good from which all good comes. Every good and perfect gift comes from him, as the epistle of James says. Yet people reject him as the very opposite of good. Either they say he is non-existent, or they say that he is evil. For a clear example of that, see the, the now famous clip on YouTube of Stephen Fry's Um, tirade, I suppose we could call it, on the late Gay Burns programme, The Meaning of Life, on RTE. One version of that clip has over 9 million views, so it's obviously struck a chord. But it's a clear example of someone calling God evil. Who are we going to listen to? The father of lies, who was a murderer from the beginning, as our Lord says, who seeks to steal and to kill and to destroy. Or will we listen to the good shepherd who came that we might have life? Jesus is himself the truth, the word of God made flesh to declare the truth of God. And so if there is anything which is contrary to what he or his apostles, who were guided by his spirit, taught, taught, 
It is by definition a lie. Lies can seem appealing, but ultimately they're not good for us. We might be tempted to tell someone a white lie, so-called, to save upsetting them, but it could and probably will end up hurting them more. And even if it doesn't, that doesn't make it right. God made us and he knows what is best for us. And so if we want to know what is best, we must listen to and believe and obey and practice his truth. Which, of course, is the only truth. We all need to heed the words of St. Paul to be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't underestimate or ignore the devil, as so many do. He is still our enemy, who, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Instead, stay close to Jesus. Listen to him. Listen to the scriptures, which are the inspired record of the truth revealed by him. And listen to his church which has been given the Holy Spirit and commissioned to teach that word of God to the world. For the good shepherd said, My sheep hear my voice and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be all praise, dominion, glory and power, for ever and ever. Amen.